All right, let's do this. Good evening, folks. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, a site for legacy death and taxes. And, all right, the thing is happening. We got a new set. People are playing around with the new cards. And the new cards are, like, good. Like, really good. Like, making new archetypes. Good. All right, now we got all that on the screen. So this is an exciting time for Legacy. Uh, this is probably the most impact that a new set has had immediately in years, probably. Like, this, this set's really powerful. So uh, this 15 post question mark deck list uh, is featuring the new Karn, Karn the Great Creator. Uh, which allows you to uh, turn some artifacts into dudes, but more importantly, you get artifacts from exile and put it into your hand. You know, it's essentially a wish for artifact cards. Uh, we have some sweet artifacts to go and find. Most notably, there's Mycosynth Lattice, which says all permanents are artifacts in addition to their other types. All cards that aren't on the battlefield, spells, and permanents are colorless. Players may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. Why does that matter? Because activated abilities of your artifacts, or sorry, of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. So if you get this plus Mycosynth Lattice, your opponent doesn't do anything. Ever. Again. Unless they have, like, some creatures that can attack. But they don't get to play any more spells unless they're, like, free. Or very close to free. Uh, when I initially saw that combo, I thought it was too cute that it was going to be, you know, maybe something that could be viable in Modern or, you know, fine for your EDH deck. But it uh, turns out that both this deck and the, the new sort of Bomberman variant are both taking advantage of it. Uh, then this deck has two other new cards. Uh, the new Ugin makes your colorless spells cheaper. You can make some spirits with it and you can destroy some permanents. Neat. And Blast Zone. Uh, it's kind of like a weird engineered explosives on a land. So it enters with a counter on it. You can pay three and sacrifice it to destroy each non-land permanent with uh, CMC equal to the number of charge counters on it. And you can also pay some mana to put a certain number of charge counters on it. The cost for that is XX. So to put one charge counter on it, it's two mana. Uh, that's not that big of a deal when you're playing cloud posts, right? So generally speaking, what is this deck looking to do? We're looking to lock our opponent out of the early game with Trinosphere and Chalice of the Void, and then play big, stum big dumb, stupid stuff off Acceleration, either Grim Monolith, Thran Dynamo, or just the lands. We've got a pretty sweet wish board. And I'm going to stop hyping it up, and I'm just going to go and get into some matches here. I am pretty tired. Not going to lie to you. Uh, it's SOL, Standards of Learning Testing Week, uh, here in Roanoke County. So um, my, my duties today included walking kids to the bathroom. For like two and a half hours. And that's surprisingly exhausting. Not because it's hard work, but because it's really boring. <laughs> oh god, I reinstalled Modo. All my stops are gone. Alright, so opponents, upkeep. Bonus main phase. I need this. I need this. I probably don't need that on my opponent's turn. Why are my cards so small? That's my next question. Alright, these need to go. Alright. So this is tapped. Then I play Blast Zone. 
All right, so I can go blast zone, voltaic, voltaic key, then cloud post, then city, city, play Thran Dynamo, untap Thran Dynamo. I have three, down two up to six, play Karn, play other Karn. I'll keep this. I don't think this hand's amazing or anything, but I don't know that it's bad enough to uh, throw back. Um, I... The plan has changed. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about job stuff. Uh, now we're playing a cloud post. My cloud post now makes two mana already, so next turn I'm just going to play a Karn, and then I'm going to play another Karn. Uh, I am in process of figuring out my job situation. I'm very close to doing so, I think. I've got a number of scheduled interviews slash have had a couple already. Uh, it's just uh, a little tiring. All right, so this is three mana. I can go up to five mana. So if I go five mana, I can play Dynamo, have one floating, have four total with Dynamo. Go down to three if I play a key. Go down to two, activate. Go back up to five. Then play a Karn. Karn minus. Get my Mycosynth Lattice. And play Mycosynth Lattice the following turn. And just lock my opponent out if they can't play something big and scary. But if they play something big and scary that can just, like, beat my Karn, I don't really end up in a good position after doing all of that. Alright, regardless, let's start playing cards. Yeah, so it, it's not 100% figured out, but um, I'm very hopeful uh, that soon I will, I will know what I am, I am doing. I, I had an interview last weekend, I had a phone interview today, follow-up interview with another one of the places, hopefully next Friday. It was Eldrazi people all along. Thought it was going to be like this sort of mirror. That's part of the reason why, like, a whole bunch of my, uh, streams have been delayed or not happening or rescheduled recently. It just kind of is what it is, you know. Things things will normalize soon. So Ugin is uh, not exactly ideal versus Thought Not Seer specifically. Because, you know, this is colored hate. It sounds terrible when you go and say it like that. Um, so I'll probably just end up like using this Karn, making a construct. What does this Karn do with its other abilities? I could turn an artifact. I see. This pluses and deals damage. So I can like turn my opponent's Grim Monolith into a creature and then shoot it with Ugin. Can't you just get the lattice again? It's in exile. That is a that is a good point. Can I make nine mana? So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I can. Is that good now though? So if I go
Yeah, I will have to get another Karn if I do that. I won't have any, like, selection in order to go and do so. If I go and put the Mycosynth Lattice into play, then it does also shut off my opponent's Grim Monolith. I probably just get a bridge this turn. And then play out a bunch of my hand. Like, let's assume that that's correct. How much mana is this? This is one, two, three. I can turn it into four mana. I don't need to turn it into four mana. But I think I'm okay with letting the City of Traders go. I don't have familiarity with, like, the lines that this deck has available to it. Like, I don't have the practice of knowing, like, how aggressively to go and go for these things. But what I did here felt pretty safe to me. And then I can, like, pull the Mycosynth Lattice from Exile with this Karn on the following turn. And then have my opponent more or less locked out. Like, a new Olamog would be a little devastating, but otherwise I don't care too much about what my opponent's doing. Like, new Olamog, Exile Bridge, and this, attack this Karn down, is bad for me. But other than that card specifically, like, I don't care about All is Dust, I don't care about another Thought Knots here, I don't care about, like, Reality Smashers. Oh, opponent's just, uh... Letting me do my thing. Uh, this says put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. That is not how I thought that worked. Whoops. Alright, again. Again with the learning. So, let's plus get a card. I will probably get another Trinus Bear. I'll use this card to get the lattice back, though. So it's not that big of a deal. All right. Four. Eight. Play a new again. I think I played this one poorly, but I don't think it's going to matter. This is so cute. I just had to do it.
D and T is a thinking man's deck. I don't I don't feel like I'm there right now, Hammy Slammy. One one too many long days of work in a row. But I can derp around and cast chalices and some big old planeswalkers without too much trouble. Yeah, you you would not be getting quality uh D and T content from me tonight. I am full of pizza because I did not want to cook when I got home. I also had a job interview that I thought was going to be brief and ended up lasting like forty-five minutes. How much minus is this card? It's minus two. So I can just minus two that card and get my bridge right back next turn and not care? No, it was, it was a good interview. Like, I, I have a follow-up meeting. Um, probably next Friday. Uh where I'm going to go and do like a teaching sample and whatnot. Alright, so my car and scion of hers is being taken down. But I don't think that matters that much. So, I guess it doesn't matter whether I get the one in my graveyard or in exile. So, like, I'll get this back. I have another bridge. I have a bunch of life. I shoot you. I guess during my opponent's turn, I can put a bunch of counters on Blast Zone. Are you indestructible? You are indestructible. But I can put a bunch of... No! <laughs> well, that's fair. I don't know that I can uh, beat this. So I put three counters on it, then it is at four counters. It already has one counter. Yep, this is Legacy. No, no, the, the Planeswalker plan was going fine. You know, going into that, I knew Olamog was going to be the problem card. And if my opponent had it, I was in trouble. Um, how big can I make this? Big. Very big. But he can't gun down Olamog. So, what, these tappers six? Alright, let's blow up that Thought Knots here. Let's start there. Like, let's see what I find. Does this card do anything that matters? 
No, everything is not colored. These colorless cards in the mirror. Ah, pseudo mirror. <laughs> Deathrite Shaman did die for this. Fuck my Thran Dynamo! Ugh. I didn't really think about that, but it's fine. I still have 16 mana. Eighteen mana. So I can cast this ballista for nine. Man, my opponent's just gonna like laser me to death. So I need to kill their ballista so they can't just like tap all their mana into ballista. Uh, but then they just like bounce this, exile my ballista. Life's bad. Yeah, like, how absurd would it be in modern if you got to just, like, Caracas back your threats? It's, it's silly. I didn't need those cards anyway. Not even gonna look at them. Um... So I could block and then just laser my opponent, but I don't think I do that. I think I take the damage, and then I hope that they don't have a Ballista or that they don't exile my Ballista, because if I get to untap and just pump mana into this, or like untap, attack with it, kill them, you know, there are, there are worlds. Yeah, D&T players always go hungry at events. You gotta be prepared. Alright, am I just getting ballisted? Nope. Please don't point at my walking ballista. They've figured me out. So four, five, down to four, up to... What does this Ugin do? This Ugin will just make me a spirit token. Spirit token can block this. I mean, I guess I'm not technically dead, at least on board. I feel like I'm on the wrong side of this mirror match. I have all these planeswalkers and my opponent has things that can attack them and my dudes that usually kill other dudes can't kill the dudes. It's sad. It is a glimmer post. But like, where am I going from here? How am I actually winning? 
Like my opponent attacks with all mod, will get down to two cards in library. I draw a card. That card needs to be like a walking ballist. No, my opponent's at eighteen now. Alright. Alright. Yeah, we're 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 we were fighting an uphill battle there. Uh, so we have a wish board, so I I need to respect that, but I should figure out what I don't want. Like I don't want Trinispheres, and I don't want chalices. So like those need to come out. Again, why are my cards so small? I reinstalled Magic Online due to stupid bugs, and now everything is hard to read. How do I make you bigger? Aha! Thank you, Eddie. So... I probably want to leave one bridge in the board to wish for. That card's very important. And I need this lattice in the sideboard to wish for. I'm probably fine with bringing in a ballista. Spyglass is kind of medium. It can stop Ayavugan and opposing walking ballista while also shutting off my own. So it's it's like awkward, but I probably want it. My opponent could have some planeswalkers in the board that I'll need to answer. Uh Shanicus or sorry, uh Shankus probably like Warping Whale is not a good card, but if we're cutting the Trinospheres and the chalices, we're gonna have a lot of slots to fill. So, like, Warping Will might just be producing a chump blocker. And that might be fine. Similarly, Ratchet Bomb is probably pretty weak, but might be worth playing just to go and round things out. Again, don't really like the side of the equation that I'm on here. This is a risk it for the biscuit hand. Because if I can produce a mana, then I will go ham with Grim Monoliths and Voltaic Keys. So like if I draw a land, I go like I guess next turn would be play key. Following turn would be like play monolith, key it, play monolith. Play Karn. This hand might be too risky. Like it has huge amounts of upside, but if I just miss that second land drop, I think I die. I think I'm gonna ship this one. Ugh. This hand is very noticeably worse. Something something, wish it was a London mulligan, something something. I will probably go to five here. I just don't know that I can win the game on this six. Like, if my top card is a land and I play, like, Grim Monolith into turn three Karn, then it leaves the Monolith tapped. And I don't really have a follow-up play after that. Like, I'd, I'd like something with some real mana production or the ability to ensnaring bridge. What is my opponent doing over there? It's not that hard. You boarded out all your bad cards. If you have lands and spells, at this point, you probably keep them. I mean, if we go to five and we get an all mana hand, like, I'll snap that off in a heartbeat. Like, that's totally capable. 
Maybe. I'll do it. Please, Swift Warkite 2. I have a chat. They're, they're here to watch the magic. Let me play. Let me mulligan into oblivion and be sad. Alright, apparently I'm going to need to, like, talk about something else here for a few. So what have I been doing? Lots of... Alright, there we go. Never mind. You don't get to know. It's a secret. Ugh. Speaking of what I've been doing, I wrote a an article on the uh, the London Mulligan as perspectives from uh, twenty different people about sort of like the pros and cons of the London Mulligan and like how it actually worked out in practice rather than in theory. Uh, it seemed to be a pretty well received piece. Awkward. So I didn't really think about this when I played the Walking Ballista, but instead of playing the Walking Ballista, I probably should have just like left my Thespian stage open in hopes of copying a Cloud Post to get one mana ahead. So, do I need to copy a Cloud Post now? So, this is 3, 4, 5, this is 6 mana. I can go down to 2 mana, up to 5 mana, play Karn. Yeah, Lesser Mouse Deer. I, I figured that out just, like, a little bit too late. So, I think I am going to go ahead and copy a Cloud Post. Like, it cost me some damage now. But long term, it might mean that I don't have to tap my Ancient Tomb as many times if we actually, like, make it to long term. So... I can just, like, Karn minus on this one, tap the Tomb, play another one. Or I can also just go, like, Karn minus, Karn minus, have two 4-4s. Four I don't really hate that. I, I kind of need to hope that my opponent doesn't have some big, dumb follow-up now, though. Because if they do, I can't particularly answer it. Like another Smasher, for example, would be devastating. Rude! So rude! Also gets my Ballista! We're gonna... We're gonna pack that one up there and move on. I don't think I, I played optimally that set. Um, but... The uh, matchup was most certainly unfavorable there. 
Like, I want to play against decks with all sorts of, like, stupid little colored creatures, and I want to bully them. I did not get to bully the other colorless creatures. But I guess this, uh, this sort of, like, style of deck is new enough that, like, maybe deck lists aren't optimized for a mirror yet. That's, that's kind of what it felt like to me. Yeah, the, 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 my day went well. It was just long. Uh, said this earlier, but it's, it's standards of learning testing week. So my job today was basically walking kids back and forth from the bathroom. And uh, they get, it gets old. Oh, 100% would a mulligan. Every one of those hands. I, I don't regret my mulligan decision at all. Like, I, I was playing to win, and it did not work out. Uh, this hand is great. I don't think I need a Voltaic Key with what I have to offer here. Uh, we're hoping that it, either a Chalice or a Spyglass really wrecks my opponent's hand. I assume my Chalice of the Void is going bye-bye at this point. Nice! I am a skilled magician. Don't you forget it, chat. We're playing against something like Ant that might be a KO punch. But basic swamp into Thoughtseize can be a lot of things. You know, it could just as easily be something like Grixis Control. A bug deck. Well, that mana up probably means that, like, this chalice is going to get decayed. I mean... What do I want to do this turn? I can just, like, Vesuva Ancient Tomb. I don't really need to do that. I think I want to play a Spyglass and, like, figure out what's going on on the other side of the table. Ah! It is Reanimator. So they can eventually just hard discard due to hand size. And unfortunately, neither one of their threats right now is legendary, so Caracas can't go and bounce it. Grizzlebrand it is. So, Karn getting Ensnaring Bridge is very good. Um, I can play Karn next turn, kind of, no matter what lands I do. So let's get some posts into play in case that becomes relevant later. I don't know that my opponent is supposed to be playing out their lands. So I can't go and play a Lattice immediately. So I'm going to get a Tormod's Crypt this turn and just cast that and have that as a safety net. And then two turns from now, I'll have uh, the Mycosynth Lattice Lockout. Look, man, I like I like chalices. What do you want me to say? Of course I wanted to like try out a deck with the new Karn. Alright, we're playing against Reanimator. Leyline seems good. Warping Whale seems good. Tormod's Crypt is great. I may end up leaving that in the sideboard to wish for. I'm unsure about that. 
I'll probably play Spyglass, maybe some of the bridges, maybe the Trinisphere. Like, I have a lot of cards that I can bring in. So, like, what's bad? Some of this top end stuff is probably not going to be necessary. I'll probably trim a little bit of that. So, like, I don't love Walking Ballista. That's more for, like, the small creature decks. And we can win the game with, like, any one Planeswalker very easily. So, 100%, I want these in. I want this. I want at least two of those. These are maybes. So, I'm going to need to cut at least six cards. I can see myself cutting the Voltaic Keys and maybe go down on some of this. And then maybe go down on some of this. That would be 60. Yeah, I, I think the new Karn is uh, much better than I initially expected. Like, I looked at that card and, you know, I was like, yeah, this is probably going to see a home, you know, maybe maybe bring some mud back or something like that. And it's like, no, this is like a like build-around card. So, I think I'm going to leave the Crypt in the sideboard and just have it as something that I can tutor for that essentially gives me like four copies of Leyline to mull to and Karn if I play it on like turn two has somewhat relevant graveyard hate attached to him. I, I think that's fine. Uh, no, we are back on uh, Vancouver Mulligan, regular Mulligan again, so we don't have the quite as free mull to Leyline scenarios. Am I willing to mulligan this hand? I have no turn one interaction, but I have turn two Tormod script off of Karn. Is that good enough when I can mulligan to Chalice or Leyline? I'm not sure that this is good enough. I would be very cap happy keeping this as like a six card hand, but on seven, when I have the ability to just mulligan into so many more impactful cards, I, I think I need to ship this. On the play, I would consider keeping. On the draw, I think this has to go. Turn one, cloud post. Turn two, cloud post, play monolith, do nothing. Uh, this is worse than the previous hand. This hand is incredible. One card short. Turn one chalice, turn two trinosphere. About the best that I can I can hope for. You know, sands just like starting with Leyline. Yeah, if you get used to the London Mulligan and they and they take it away from you, you know, there's there's worlds where you miss it. Um, you know, I I pushed out a big article recently. You know, had lots of people talk about the London Mulligan. There's there's plenty to say. You know, good good and bad about it. He just him to Turok me. And took the, like, probably two best combinations of cards from the hand. But I drew a chalice off the top like a skilled magician. So it's fine. Note here, uh, because of the Urborg, 
we don't have to uh, like take damage off our ancient tomb in order to do this. Super convenient. Hopefully our uh, opponent taking time off to him to Turok us means that uh, we can draw into another land and start doing things with this card. Never mind. We didn't want it anyway. Now we have this sneaky warping whale. They try to get me again with their him. Good job. Super punished for not making a 1-1 one -one there. But I don't regret it. Like, using the Warping Whale to counter a critical sorcery spell could be very important. But at the same time, like, I have so many, like, Karns and Thran Dynamo and such that maybe I was just supposed to, like, preemptively Warping Whale for mana. Unmask, Pitch, Dark Ritual. Well, I will counter that. Land. Technically, that is what I asked for. So this is two, three, four, Karn, minus, yes, get Tormod's Crypt, cast Tormod's Crypt, And then I can like follow up by throwing a Trinisphere into play, tutoring up a bridge, or going and like just tutoring up. Never mind. And opponent, if you had cards that did anything instead of these Him to Turox, I might have just died. But you were very kind to me. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Minus. Yes. Michael Saint Gladys, two, three, four, five, six. Michael Saint Gladys. Hey, that was easy. Gives an aider. I don't know why the reanimator is playing him to Turok. Like, theoretically, I guess it can give you some legs versus combo, help you to fight against their cart. Or sorry, uh, help you fight against control decks. You can fight against their card advantage. Um, you know, it helps you against opposing combos, I deck, I guess, but, like, my thought on Reanimator is, like, if you're playing it, you're just trying to get your opponent dead. You don't want to dilute your deck too much. Like, you want to bring in the minimum number of sideboard cards necessary in order to go and, like, keep the matchup where it needs to be in terms of win percentage. Like, what, that was our opponent's, like, third him to Turok? Like, if... There had been, like, an animate dead there, and something that got rid of something in their hand, I might have been in trouble. Okay, so here, here's what happens. So the new Karn has a static ability that says activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated, and this turns everything into artifacts. So that includes your opponent's lands, so they can't produce mana anymore, so they die. Turn one, Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith, Trinisphere. I will... I'll keep that, I guess. I guess that's fine. Yeah, uh, a Brutality 
uh, Collected Brutality is a great example of like the sort of card that I would have been afraid of. Here we go. <laughs> Magic is hard. All right. I don't know what my opponent's playing. They've got finishes with a whole bunch of decks. So I'll probably just whack the submit button and call it good. Like my opponent mulligan to five, that might be indicative of some sort of combo hand, but I don't know that I'm willing to actually make any major changes to my deck based on seeing just polluted delta. Like, Trinosphere is probably fine. Sorcerer's Spyglass might not be great. Like, what would I name if I got it early? And they don't have anything in hand that's relevant. Otherwise, like, if we have sideboard cards that we need, Karn can go and get most of them. So I'm not gonna, like, mulligan too aggressively, not knowing what I need. How ham do I get to go? Uh, I'm gonna whack keep, and while my opponent is doing their turn, I'm gonna figure out how ridiculous this opener is. So I go Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith, go up to three mana, key and activate, that's what, one mana, four mana, so I can turn one a Karn or a Karn. All right, so our opponent's probably a storm deck based on duress. Um, yeah, taking the monolith is fine. So I'm going to be playing a turn to like one of these, probably this one, but we'll see. I don't know that I actually want to put this Voltaic Key into play. Like, it costs me two life, and I think that's going to be very relevant. It will let me get silly, though, if I draw something like a Thran Dynamo, so I guess, like, it's fine. You know, we... By not boarding, we clearly boarded wrong, but at least we brought brought that brought in a Trinosphere, so we get at least something from all of this. So if I play Karn the Great Creator, I can minus and get Tormod's Crypt. And just sit that on the battlefield so my opponent can't go off via past in flames. That's nice. Well, I don't need to think too much about it. So I don't have a chalice in exile. So like, Karn lets you get something that's in exile or in your sideboard, so I wouldn't be able to go and get a chalice. I think I'm just going to plus here and try to dig towards a piece of hate. Lasso and in cloud post, not overly exciting. I, I don't think this Karn is in, uh, in danger of just aggroing my opponent out if I go minus, minus. Like the, the way I see myself winning this game is by finding a hate piece before my opponent can go off. And I expect my opponent to be able to go off either this turn or next turn if I don't interrupt them in any way, so... Wow, I am still alive. It's 
So again, let's try to find a hate piece. I'll get a Trinisphere next turn. That's cool. I can make a bunch of mana and make a somewhat big walking ballista. Three, five, six, seven, eight. Three mana, untap. Yeah. I guess I want to play something untapped. I would say an RSS feed is on the bucket list, but it's not on the bucket list. I usually go and just like push it out to Reddit, Facebook, you know, and a handful of other places, and it usually gets the job done. Long term, I don't imagine it would be too difficult to set up. I just, uh, have too many other things on my plate at the moment. You know, I've wanted to do a website redesign for, for quite some time. I don't know how soon I'm going to get Hercules recalled, but I would imagine soon. So I want to go minus this Karn, get the transfer. That cost me three of my mana, so that costs this much mana. And then I can also untap this Grim Monolith. So I guess let's do it like this. So let's untap that. Let's play one of those out. So we're going to do it like this so that my Ballista doesn't just get Hercules along with everything else. And I guess I'll just retap this. I could have played a Cloud Post instead. Alright, it's just an Echoing Truth. That's fine. That presumably means that they're going to, like, go off or try to go off this turn. Still digging. So there got to be a business card here as the last card. A dark ritual and a concession. That was a rough hand from our opponent. Like, they pondered, brainstormed, and brainstormed, and just ended up with all mana. Like, no cantrips to keep going, no, uh, no infernal tutor, no past in flames, no ad nauseas. There were a lot of hits there for them. Um, they were maybe premature in using the. Echoing Truth, if they didn't have a reasonable chance of going off, but maybe they felt like they couldn't wait any longer in order to do so. Like, if I get another hate piece down and their answer is Echoing Truth and not Hercules, then they probably lose. And the Walking Ballista does represent some amount of clock, right? 
you know, even if it just attacks for four, there's still four counters sitting on the table, so it makes an ad nauseum considerably worse. Oh, and Lord Darkie, what, what thing did you really uh, dislike, if you don't mind me asking, just to generate some London Mulligan conversation while we're here? So that was, uh, that was Wilson Hunter's idea, um, you know, CEO slash co-founder of Cardboard Live, and uh, I don't know how I feel about that, but I will say that if you had said that to me two months ago, that like, you know, open deck lists, that is deck lists where you know what your opponent is playing, are a good thing for magic, I would have totally dismissed it. Now I'll listen to it. Now I will, like, entertain the thought. That's, that's where I'm at. I don't know, like, that would be one of those things where years of playing magic in a certain way have, like, tailored the sort of experience that I, I know and love in a certain way, but there might be other, other ways of doing it where you end up with a good result still. Like, I don't think... Oh, open deck list would be a very different game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this one. I'm not doing anything quick here. This hand's terrible. This hand is medium. I'm going to put this chalice on top. I don't want it. I actively don't want it. But if I get thought seized or this chalice gets countered, I feel like I'm in a really bad position if my opponent's a blue deck. Man, this Rashadon port is going to super bone me. So I'm going to play a Chalice on one to stop Gamble specifically, although crop rotation to a lesser extent. And then I'm going to hope to put the second Chalice on two in order to stop Punishing Fire and Life from below. Uh, this matchup is probably going to slow to a crawl, though. Like. I, I, I don't have another land, and my opponent is just going to port me into Oblivion. So I'm really going to need three lands before I get to do anything else. Hey, I can Blast Zone and uh, get rid of Exploration. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's like technically a thing I can do that matters somewhat, like, eh. Yep. Well, I mean, that's exactly what I did, why I played the Chalice. Opponent says, oops. So, I don't think it's worth playing a 1, or is it worth playing a 1-1 one, one Walking Ballista? Kind of sucks if they have Punishing Fire, but if they don't have Punishing Fire, 
I can just, like, they'll port me in the upkeep, and then I can turn it into a 2 2 and do things. Whatever. I'll do it. Like, it gives me some negligible clock. And if they spend some mana on taking care of this instead of doing anything that matters, great. They continue to port me, and I get to, you know, turn this into a real threat, also great. Come on. Port me. I could also just like Thespian stage something. But I don't I don't think that really gets me anywhere. Like, I'm going to get out from under single port soon. And I don't think they really have the resources. That's fine. Hit yeah. Hit yeah. A Sylvan Library. I mean, of the of the two drops that they could have played, that's much better for me than like, say, a Life from the Loam. Yeah, that's fine. Wah 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 wah. So I'm probably gonna end up putting a counter on my blast zone at end of turn and then blowing up their Sylvan Library. Maybe not, but uh, Sylvan Library is a scary card. Honestly, I probably should have thought about, or no, I couldn't have like done it in my upkeep and then yeah, because it taps in order to do it. Uh, no, I don't think they can get rid of artifacts in game one. Yeah, that's true. I could just stage tomb then they can only port one of my lands and I can guarantee Chalice on two. <laughs> You're cheeky! Look at you! That's so cool! So that's going to be a copy of Blast Zone with zero counters on it, so that'll blow up Chalice of the Void as well as their Mox Diamond. Clever girl indeed. Yeah, this is my first time playing with Blast Zone, so I haven't had that happen before. So now I don't want to Chalice on 2 until Blast Zone is gone. Which means, let's make a Planeswalker.
And we're just going to like plus this. It's just two lands. Uh, which is fine by me. Yeah, I would, uh, I would enjoy playing lands with a blast zone. I would even be willing to try that in Legacy. Um, Jarvis shared a lands list that had a, I think, two blast zones. I think one was in the main deck and one was in the sideboard in one of our group chats. I think the card has real potential there. I don't think it's like insane, game changing in the shell or anything. Um, but it's nice to have something that can, for example, go and answer a true name nemesis cleanly. Like, that's just so cool. My opponent didn't bother to port me. I don't know if that just means they're gonna like use their mana to blast zone or what. And they also have like another Thespian stage, so they can do this crap again. Inconvenient. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can just Ugin. More land. I mean, they also could just, like, grow the Blast Zone, right? So they could use, like, one... There's a number of things that could happen. I'm not going to play scared. I'm not going to just, like, keep holding up a Thespian stage. I think that's a, a good recipe towards losing the game. I think I need to advance my board a little bit more. I'm really surprised my opponent conceded there. I did not think that game was anywhere close to over. I, in fact, felt like I was not favored. So, I'm very happy there. You know, I was afraid of something like Blast Zone, Crop Rotation, Get Depths, Stage Copy Depths, and I lose. So I'm uh, very happy to see that concession there. Okay, so what do I like? What do I not like? I'll probably board Ley Lines. They're kind of medium, but... Doesn't one of these things make all my stuff, like, colorless, and I can, like, use colorless mana or something? I thought there was some card that turned colored cards into colorless cards that I was playing. Oh, is it Mycosynth Lattice? Mycosynth Lattice. So there's a world where if I draw a ley line too late, I can use Mycosynth Lattice to actually cast it. Alright, so I probably want these. Um, could Ratchet Bomb, Opposing Moxon. I want to leave this in the board. Alright, well, maybe let's do this the other way. Like, what don't I want? I probably don't want Trinispheres. And I probably want to trim some of this top end. So, like, this destroys permanents that are more than one color. Or one or more color. 
So I probably want to live a, leave a crypt and a bridge in the sideboard. I probably want to board in these. I'll probably board in my spyglass. Probably trim one of those. These spirits don't fly, do they? No. Okay, I'll trim a couple of those. Our phone's not going to have many creatures. I think that's safe. It's also possible that I should just, like, get rid of Voltaic Keys. Uh, not an overly impressive hand, but I'll be keeping this one. I'm unsure what we'll be doing with this chalice. I mean, I would really like to put it on two. Right. My opponent has discarded a Croson Grip, which is presumably what they gambled for. So life is good for me. Oh, sorry, I just noticed Mycosynth Lettuce. That was... That was what I've come to expect from you. Let's put it that way. Another gamble. That got rid of a Dark Depths. So presumably there's a Croson Grip in hand over on the other side there. We are not getting Wastelanded, uh, which is a huge boon for us. <coughs> So, I think I want to play a monolith this turn, and then just pass. This lets me chalice on two next turn. And if they would like to spend their turn cross and gripping my monolith so I can't do sweet things, then I still have a ley line. Yes, I, I do not just instantly fold to one Marilage hit. I am, I am at 25 now. This is the pause of someone thinking about what to do with this, this Croson grip. Yep, and that's, that's fine. We already talked about this. So I'll play a Chalice on one, and I'll go ahead and save future Chalices. Like, I can, like, get cute and try to put one on zero, stop Chrome Mox, or not Chrome Mox, on Mox Diamond on the other side of the battlefield, but I don't think that's actually good. Like, I'd much rather have a backup copy of these for if, like, a Blast Zone gets Thespian Stage and this gets swept off or something. Tireless Tracker. Another Crossing Grip. Wow. So this this port over there is uh, is going to be very good. Oh, 
However, hopefully this chalice is also very good. Again, you know, since we have this blast zone in play, they're just a thespian stage away from taking us off of these. Uh, don't really need to tick Blast Zone up, I don't think. Like, I could tick it up to two and then a Sylvan Library. Uh, yeah, I think my life is more valuable, like, staying at actively above 20. Is, is good. I mean, opponent getting an Experimental Frenzy would be, uh, Pretty sweet. Oh wow, they're uh, they're going down hard, looking for uh, I don't know what exactly. A tireless tracker would be uh, pretty pretty good. So we'll put a counter on one of those. They'll port down our ancient tomb. I've got good flexibility. I guess I should have a second main phase stop. I, I had to reinstall Moto due to a bug. And so I don't have all my stops where they should be yet. I want to have one of these on two and one of these at three at some point. That's fine. I like to stop both Sylvan Library and Tireless Tracker. Fucking it's stupid. I'm so stupid. I set this on two thinking I don't have twos that I care about except for Grim Monolith. Um, do I just, like, minus this card and go aggro? kind of feel like the answer is yes. Like, just make a 3-3. Three, three, and then have two 4-4s four, next turn. Can make them bigger than that. It just sets me up for further failure, though, if my opponent does get a Thespian stage. But that's okay. Oh, another quick concession. So we're we're off to a a very good three one start. Although I don't feel like we've really done anything all that impressive. Like, I think we got a lot of early concessions from opponents, and, like, I don't feel like this deck is overly degenerate or anything like that. You know, I haven't seen the the top end of this deck do very much work, you know. Most of the games that I've won have just been largely on the back of Chalice and Karns. I haven't got to see, like, this part of the equation actually be good. Uh, this hand looks pretty medium. It's 
So I can go Cloud Post, copy Cloud Post. Have two mana on turn two. Use that to play a Spyglass. And then play a Ballista. Or a large-ish number. Somewhat quickly. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this... Under the London Mulligan, I think I would have pitched this one, but on a regular Vancouver Mulligan, I don't know that like this hand is actually bad enough to go back. Like Sorcerer Spyglass might actually be a speed bump if my opponent is playing something like Death and Taxes, and like this Walking Ballista is going to be insane. You know, life might actually be okay. So, don't really care about anything in my opponent's hand except for their Rashadden port. I mean, like, if they get Wastelands off the top, they get Wastelands off the top. But I, I think I stop what's here. Uh, interview went well. I have a follow-up in... So it was, it was a phone interview. I have a follow-up in-person interview next week. Uh, and I spent the, the weekend in North Carolina at another in-person interview. Of course. But uh, if you've been wondering by why streams have been more uh, more sporadic than normal and why I'm not, you know, adhering super tightly to the schedule that I've always otherwise kept, that's why. Just eating up a lot of time and brain power. Alright, you got a batter skull. Alright. Do I feel like I need to use the walking ballista to get rid of the Stoneforge Mystic? Well, first things first. Four mana. Player and dynamo. One mana voltaic key. So I could just like trade the walking ballista for Stoneforge Mystic, and then what does my opponent do? My opponent can like recruit her of the guard for something. If I wait on this ballista, the next turn I can go two. Because I didn't think that far ahead. So next turn I can go 2, 4, 2, 4, 5, 8, 7, 10. I can walking ballista for x equals 5. I think I let that go. It's a super misplay to like tap the stage other than the dynamo because I could have just like used this turn to like stage copy a cloud post. Um, but I think that's all fine. Because it lets me just like throw down the Trinisphere and just like constrain my opponent's mana, just like ensure that they can't just go crazy. Um. This is actually probably very good for me. 
So one, two, three, four, five, six. Nug that. All right, and my opponent concedes to the Ballista there. So the Ballista was going to kill the Revoker, I was going to use Thran Dynamo and Voltaic Key, put another counter on this, kill the Stoneforge Mystic, and have a Ballista on an empty board, forcing my opponent's like Swords to Plowshares. Uh, I was in an awesome, awesome spot. All right, uh, so what do, we want, what do we want against DNT? Probably Warping Whales, Ballista... Probably two of the three bridges, leave one in the sideboard to tutor for. Probably Spyglass, probably Bomb. So probably looking for seven-ish cards, which very conveniently is the number of Chalices plus Trinospheres that I have. Uh, quick check, is there anything that I like less than any of that? No. Uh, leave a Ballista in the sideboard, you say. I could get behind that, and then like I'll bring in a bridge instead. Because if I'm going to tutor for something with Karn, getting a Ballista is probably better than getting a bridge. I could buy that argument. So then we have like Lattice for the lockout potential and Walking Ballista to just mow down the board. Like I'd kind of like to leave a bridge in there too, but that would require leaving a Trinisphere or a Chalice of the Void in the main deck, and I really don't like that. Opponent giving sideboarding some thought on their side. Um, this may be the first time that they played against this specific build. <laughs> I like your, your thought there, Lord Darkie. They also could be considering why are they not playing a bunch of cataclysms. Which, by the way, if you're if you're a DNT player, but uh, sorry, if you're a DNT player, I, I think Cataclysm is a great place to be right now, uh, especially for Magic Online. Uh, I'll be keeping this hand. It's very medium, but we have two two removal spells and a planeswalker. You know, that's that's an okay position to be in. Uh, we're hoping to scry some mana to the top. Hey, that's mana. That's in fact very good mana. In fact, because it lets us cast the warping whale on turn one. Yeah, it's so weird that this deck is able to squeeze in so many Planeswalkers. Like, I'm not sure that so many are needed. Like, I haven't seen uh, Pithing Needle. Uh, Pithing Needle results. Like, what are what are you gonna name? Karn the Great Creator. That's that's a good name. Unfortunately, I have the other Karn. Man, I just want to kill your ether vial right now. I think that's better than putting a Karn into play.
I know it sets me back quite a bit, but like my opponent has missed a land drop. Like it was, it's a two for two because like Blast Zone also cost me a card, and like I also Warping Whaled in order to do that. Um, but I think getting rid of the vial is so huge. Not sure why exactly my opponent switched the name there, uh, but they did. Um, could just flop this bridge into play. I could just hold up Warping Whale and get rid of the Revoker if my opponent doesn't play anything else. I'm going to get ported next turn for my Ancient Tomb, in all likelihood. I think for mana efficiency, I want to play this Ensnaring Bridge this turn. I think I'm willing to take two from the Revoker. Like, if my opponent just tries to aggro me out and just keep cards in my hand, I'm going to continue to make land drops while they do nothing. This is the point where I will uh, go ahead and Warping Whale the Revoker. Because I value my the two points of life here. I'm at 12 already, and I'm going to keep hitting myself with this Ancient Tomb. So I think it's fine to just, like, get rid of this. Because if my opponent Rashadon ports this, I still get to play a Karn. Uh, in these card structs, there will be three threes. I won't have that many cards in hand. Yeah, so let's just like send this card up. Thran Dynamo and Ugin. Hello, friend. So this is probably the point where if my opponent has anything, they need to stop porting me, and they need to, like, build up their board. I'm not actually that scared of Palace Jailer. One, two, three, four, five. Can I get there this turn? So Grim Monolith is essentially plus one mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. So next turn I can Ugin. This is going to be a setup turn. Where I will make a lot of mana. Oh, there's an Ugin and a Karn. They give me another Karn.
Yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping that my opponent does not have the exact card Cataclysm. Otherwise, uh, most of what they're doing isn't that scary. Like, a Revoker will be a little annoying. Like, they can revoke Karn. And I'm a little sad, but not that sad. Which Ugin do I want? Let's take the bigger Ugin. I'm totally going to uh, Thespian stage an opponent's like Mishra's factory, potentially, also, to go and take the take the monarch. That sounds really fun. Yeah, or I could port them. Or I could get a Wasteland and Wasteland their factory. Like, there's... There's a lot of lines. A again, I think my opponent is on a, like... Have-to-have Cataclysm situation. Uh, let's test me and stage something. I'll target the wasteland. See if they'll use it to blow something up. They will. They'll take out my blast zone. Who can just ultimates next turn, right? Yeah. Oh, can I not get that? How did that get an exile then? If not with Karn. Or I just like, do I have the wrong zone pulled up? Oh, there it is. I did. I had my revealed zone pulled up, not my exiled zone. I get a blast zone if they kill this spirit. Isn't that neat? It might be too late for Cataclysm at this point. And my opponent just says, yep, GG, didn't draw Cataclysm. Like, if they Cataclysmed, I would get to keep, like, a land plus a Thran Dynamo, and then redeploy a Karn. So, like, I, I think I would have come out ahead there. 
in, in that race. And, like, I could go Karn and minus immediately make a 2-2. Two -two. Minus, well, uh, Romario, we were specifically talking about Cataclysm. So, like, Cataclysm would have swept the Planeswalkers off. Um, so, like, hypothetically, if he drew Cataclysm, I'd keep land and Thran Dynamo. I'd play a Karn from hand, minus. I'd minus that Karn the next turn. I'd have two three threes. I'd play the secondary Karn. I'd have three four fours. Attack for four, then presumably attack for, like, 15. So I probably just would have killed my opponent in two turns via aggro after a Cataclysm. So, um, I, I, I don't think Cataclysm was even an out anymore. And, like, once I became the Monarch, too, uh, like, it's just disgusting. So, uh, this shell feels good. I don't know that this is the, the best version of the shell or anything. You know, it's possible that just, like, being lower to the ground and stopping at four is plenty. Um, you know, we did play some matchup where, like, this stuff wasn't super relevant. So, like, when you're playing against Storm, you don't particularly care about these. You know, when you're playing against a, an Eldrazi deck, you don't really care about this stuff either. You know, it's it's the stuff here. So these had the highest impact tonight. Uh, it, it is Goblin Lackey. Like, uh, this this new Karn is, is the real deal. Literally every Legacy streamer is playing post. I don't know, I was playing Miracles. But, um, more generally, like, fair. Like, this is a huge amount of post content right now. Um, funny you should mention that, Lord Darkie, because, like, I had two deck lists pulled up for what I was going to stream tonight. Uh, and I decided, you know, I'm going to play post because a lot of people made Bomberman content this week. So. I, uh. I, I do think that, that Karn is, is the hotness. It, it may be one of the, the best cards from the set, at least in terms of legacy. Um, I haven't played around with any of the, the blue stuff yet from the set, though. Um. I haven't played with the like Teferi or, or Narset yet. Karn counters the Karn decks. It's the mental misstep of Planeswalkers. Yeah, I mean, Karn's pretty great. Uh, one of the other things I've, I've been talking about is like playing the new Karn in a red prison shell. Um, I think that's problematic for a couple of reasons, but I don't think it's unreasonable. Like, I, I love the general sideboard package that we have in this deck list. And, like, if you compare this to a Red Prison sideboard, you know, this isn't all that different from what Red Prison is already playing anyway. Barbara thinks Karn's gonna get banned. No, it's a, it's a four mana combo win condition if you treat it that way. Like, it's absolutely no different than, you know, other broken things that are already running around the format. Like, how is this any worse than, like, show and tell into omniscience, you know? Like, you can do both of them on turn two. But, like, the Karn takes much more time to actually win the game, right? Like, you have to invest four mana into it, then six mana into it, and neither one of those spells can be countered, and the Karn has to stick around. Like, there's a, there's a lot of conditions there that have to be true. I don't, I don't know that Karn is the best thing that you can be, be doing. Like the the new Karn is very powerful. Like we we saw that tonight. That was that was very clear. But you know, is the best thing that you can be doing in Legacy really ten mana combo? I think this is new. I think this is new and cool and fits into a lot of different shells that people were already interested in. Right. Like, this fits into Mud, 
This fits into 12th post. This fits into Bomberman. It probably works in Red Prison. You can shove it into the sideboard of something like Death and Taxes if you want. <laughs> Vampire X Mage. Great magic card. So it's, a, it's actually like 15 posts, right? So you get Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, Stages, and Vesuvas. Yeah, so like, um, I do want to follow up on something Lord Dark you just said. Like, it's it's not just the, the lattice thing. Like, there is a good degree of flexibility here. Uh, this has given the these prison-style decks a little bit more Game 1 interaction than they normally have gotten in the past. So, like, you get Game 1 access to graveyard hate, you know, extra combo hate, you know, um, an extra piece against your, your mid-range deck, removal. Like, there is good flexibility associated with with this package. And when you can consider that you can like play this on turn two, that that's really cool. All right, I think that's all I have to say about this deck. Um, I will be back when I can be back. Uh, I've got a lot on my plate right now. I'm doing job interviews, job applications and stuff like that. Uh, so my schedule isn't gonna be super consistent, you know? If I have time tomorrow, I'll stream. If I don't have time tomorrow, I'm not gonna stream. Uh, that's just kind of the the way that it is right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep streaming like two days a week. Um, but like with SOL testing this week and the job interviews that I'm doing, uh, my my time is pressed, and I need to make sure that I'm still you know producing good content when I'm streaming. You know, I I want these days to be good, not just like me phoning it in for the for the sake of doing it. And if my Twitch, su Twitch numbers suffer for a month while I'm figuring life out, I'm okay with that. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the towel and uh, probably have a drink and relax a little bit. I will see you all when I can. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. And I'll hope to have another video out soon. Cheers.